Sports talk conversations with a good laugh mixed in. This is the Sports Talk with Bedford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. All right. H.G. Thrash, I was telling you about that. Kingsgate on the south side of 82nd, where Anderson Jewelers used to be. It is a phenomenal mm-hmm. store. You will love it. Beautiful store. And then, of course, 2010 Broadway has always been a phenomenal. Oh, let me tell you what. The store's beautiful, but go in there, and it's it's pretty. I mean, they have the ties laid out like this, the shirts. It's, yeah. it's, it's really sort of – you could be artsy, craftsy, and go in there and just say, good gosh, this is pretty. It is. You'll yeah. like it. Go see them at H.G. Thrash. For Father's Day, it would be excellent thing to do. I right, was supposed to have Bill Jones, and I think is he trying to zoom in? Oh, is he there? I don't oh. see him. Oh, oh there I he is. see him. Hey, Bill, what are you doing, man? <laughs> that is one fine-looking cap. Had <laughs> had a boy. We all got our our ten. Well, yeah, Gary put no. Gary didn't put his on. He's got his no. Red Raider cap. You, thank you for not wearing an OU cap. Well, uh, my choices were the Texas Tech cap that I got from when Joey McGuire became the head coach, or. My TNA cap, which I always have to explain what that is when I wear it. What well, do you wear that to church on Sundays? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, you got your wish. You were wanting to go back to Boston so bad, and you're going to oh, get to go back. That's so good. <laughs> we're going to win it all. We'll be the first team in history to come back That's from right. 3 Come back from a 3 nothing deficit and win it all. Yep, we were texting yesterday, I guess, and uh, – this is for our family, and I was listening earlier. Uh, you mentioned Billy Breedlove. Yeah, and uh, he's Billy down there and with you. Family. Isn't he? Yeah, he's with Billy you right and now. His family are in town. He's out in the backyard right now, setting up the bounce house. We're having our cousins' weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get to be there for all of that. When's the game? Monday? Is it? Uh, the game's Monday. I got to leave tomorrow morning early oh. to go to Houston. Yeah. Now, you're not actually broadcasting the game. You're actually no, just reporting no. from there. No, for your, I'm, yeah. For I'm the just station. Uh, watching uh, in the high up, as high as you can get in the TD Garden in Boston or at the American Airlines Center. In fact, it's so high that I just decided, what the heck, I'm going to watch it in the club at the club level, and I don't even watch the court. I just watch it on TV on my iPad. <laughs> So. You can stay home, save a little money <laughs> stay in Dallas. It's so much better. It's so much easier to, and uh, you can see so much more if you just stay at home and watch the game. I know it. and report. You could call into the station. I'm here in my right. in my den. <laughs> well, and, uh, I, last no night doubt. was you know just ridiculous. I mean, they were up 40 points on Boston, and they're behind 3-0, and you're like, there's a lot somebody's of quit. A lot of quit in these guys <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, they're down 3-1 in the series, but now they've outscored Boston in the series 408-402. <laughs> to 402. Well, it's, uh, you know, they're really fun to watch. Luka is just an amazing player. You know, there's two guys in the NBA that don't look like basketball players at all. They're two of the best players. One of them is Luka. Who's the other one, Bill? For well, you're going to say Jokic? Or- I'm going to say Jokic. He would be like, other than he's tall, I would say, give me that guy. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. that's he, right. It's if amazing. You're picking sides. Yeah. Well, they don't look like they'd be good at anything. I know. It. But Luca can play. And the uh, boys They'd be pretty strong. good bouncers in a club, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. There you go. Uh huh. Yep. That's what they'd be good at. He's making flat uh, shoes. Especially with uh, Luca's temperament. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, he's getting a little fiery. He was very nice yesterday. Well, they were, they were winning, winning yesterday were winning by 48 points at one point. <laughs> was it 48? They were up by 48 at one point, yeah. I watched it. I watched a lot of it. And I was switching back and forth between that and Tennessee. And, yeah. And, yeah. and I would just hit the arrow and go back and forth. But then I just quit watching because it was we – Well, just do you dogging. think they should have a run rule? Say, hey, <laughs> that's enough. Let's go. Yeah, well, let's they go basically home. did – uh, once it got up over, it was around 38 in the third quarter, and that's when the Boston coach decided to pull his starters with about two or three minutes left in the third quarter. Okay. And then and then the Mavericks did the same thing. You know, Luka, coming into last night's game, had only scored eight points in the fourth quarter of the first three games of this series. Well, he still has only scored about eight to say. points <laughs> in the fourth quarter of this series. Oh, shoot. 
Yeah. Okay. All right, here's the deal. Here's what they're up against. In seven game series, it's oh and 156 all time on teams yeah. teams that that were down 03. And it's yep. 0 and 14 in the NBA finals. So yeah. well, there one, you have it. 0 and 156 in the in the <laughs> whole playoffs. And then uh, yep. So history, I'm not I'm not here to say that history will no, be made. And and here's another stat that might might uh, back you on this one, Bill, is uh Boston has not lost more than two straight games all season. Mm. Yeah. That yeah. was the first loss. You can use that in your broadcast, Bill. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah. They've not lost more than – and it may not be the truth, but it's on this piece of paper here. So That's right. Yeah. And as long as you say it with authority, that's it right. sounds like the truth. That's exactly right. Uh-huh. That's okay. They ask Perkins – what is the guy's name? His name's Perkins. I guess he's a former player. He's one of the guys on TV. And she was Kendrick Perkins. Yeah, Kendrick Perkins. And did he play for Dallas? No. Uh he play he's from Beaumont, Texas. And I don't ask me what NBA teams he played for because I don't watch the NBA until they get to the playoffs. <laughs> so uh, until they make me go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, for work. Bill, you're go going Boston for the NBA finals. That's when I start paying attention. But anyway, he uh, said the girl that was in the studio was ta- interviewing him on the court and he's you know, he's she goes, Well, now that as a big win for Dallas, you think they can Make a comeback here. He goes, no, they're going to lose game five. <laughs> he said, this will be over after game five. Yeah, I think that's probably safe to say. <laughs> I think it, that's probably true. Yeah, yeah. But, David, how and many – I'll be there to witness it. How yeah. many, no, sort of. How many people would go to Boston Gardens and go on the club deal and watch it on TV? <laughs> I know. Bill you, Jones. You know, you know you've seen a lot of athletic events when you do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yep. And, and, uh, well, you can't see it from up there where you are, can you? They're like little ants right. running it's, it's around. It's gotten worse and worse uh, because they can they can make so much money off those suites yep. that they just push the media. One of these, and in fact, in uh, the Super Bowl down in Houston a few years ago, I just I decided I'm not even the the media tent was across the street from uh, the stadium. And I just decided, you know what? I've got a great here. spot right here with a big old TV <laughs> in front of me. I'm not even going to walk across the street and go in the stadium. And this was the Super Bowl. Yeah. And because I could do my job so much better by just watching yeah. it on TV there in the media room. Well, you need to know this, everybody listening. We're visiting with Bill Jones. He's a sports anchor at CBS 11. Is that still correct? That, that so this is. is how you do your job. Amazingly, the... I'm still there. <laughs> and he was at Lubbock. He was in Lubbock. And uh, it what channel eleven is that where you were? I no, I was at channel twenty eight. Channel twenty eight. Came back. Came back. You bet. <laughs> and met your wife here. I, I did. Met Stacy. Stacy Breedlove. Um, and I was there in Lubbock from nineteen eighty one, November of eighty one, until uh, January of eighty six. So through through to uh, nineteen eighty five, and took Stacy kicking and screaming to San Antonio. Mm. Uh, and I probably stayed in Lubbock two years longer than um, than I was planning to because I uh, met <laughs> Stacy and then um, finally convinced her if we're going to get uh, make any money in this business at all, we got to go to San Antonio and then to Dallas, and that's what happened. Dallas has been good to you. It's been good, and this is uh, my home. Uh, I grew up in Irving, just down the road from Texas Stadium, so uh, it was a dream of mine to work in Dallas and I've been blessed unbelievably to be able to do that for who's the well, most 1990 is when I uh, started working in Dallas who's the most famous that's kind of starstruck you when you talk to him you actually uh-huh. interviewed them he's wearing their cap oh yeah other than Gary <laughs> other than Gary and I who is yeah. next um it, it probably goes back to when I was in college at OU and I was working for KGOU Radio and they had a couple of uh, former OU players who played in the NBA, Alvin Adams and Clifford Ray and Gar Hurd, just going way back. Yeah. But they had a doubleheader, a, an NBA preseason doubleheader at the Lloyd Noble Center. And I, here I am with this little cub reporter for KGOU Radio. <laughs> Uh, and I went to the Lakers shoot around and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I caught up with him on the ramp coming outside the arena to get back on. There's, he was going to get on the bus to go back to the hotel. 
and I had my little tape recorder here, and I'm on the the uh, the low portion of the ramp. He's up high, and he's already seven feet two as you saw. And I'm reaching up with my <laughs> microphone to interview uh, Kareem, and that was probably the most starstruck I've ever been. Yeah. Well, oh, that would be a good one. Yeah, it would. Be. Yeah, yeah. Magic. Uh, that was uh, Magic Johnson's rookie season. And they actually played the second game of the doubleheader, and Magic was sitting, was standing courtside watching the end of the first game. And so I've just pulled up my little tape recorder out and interviewed Magic Johnson <laughs> before he ever played an NBA game, a you know, regular season How game. Did, well, you know what? Just, that shows me something about a young Bill Jones. Yeah. He wasn't af- afraid to step up and ask for the order. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. that's impressive. You know, a lot well, of them would cower in the corner, but not Bill Jones. No, not that's Bill. right. Yeah, I do remember my first uh, my first day working on the job at KMAC in Lubbock. Uh, it was uh, well. First off, I went to uh, in a helicopter. Only first and only time I've ever been in a helicopter. It was the time of the state playoffs, and we we flew. We stopped in Hale Center <laughs> and Plainview and Whit Harrell for a little six-man action and Littlefield. I went to four different stops. Well, uh, those were probably pretty exciting for the fans at the stadium, too. Here comes right. a with helicopter. That chopper land in there. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. neat. That's great. All right. We, we talked a lot of sports with you over the years, but I don't know that we've covered you you look no. athletic. Are you any good at anything? Were you good at something? No. You weren't good at anything. No, wasn't good at anything. <laughs> well, what were you the I, uh, least bad at? <laughs> What's that? What were you the least bad at? Do you play uh, some basketball? I, I, basketball is what I played in. Oh, wait a second. I might have something. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Yeah. This uh, oh, no. Is that deal? Everybody got a trophy. Dust it off. <laughs> All right. No, it's not a trophy. I, I do have some Irving YMCA trophies up here. <laughs> this is a picture of me playing high school oh, basketball right there. That's, is that you backing off in the far left? Here's why, here's why this is, here's why this picture is so important to me. One of my most treasured uh, articles of anything, any picture that I've ever had up in the, up in the stands back here is my mom and dad oh, watching me play. That is awesome. Oh. It doesn't get any better than that. I mean, it's a it's a great example of um, you know what you should do as parents supporting your kids. Sit up yeah. there and be quiet. <laughs> That's right. And, and my and, and my and both of them were they never yelled at an official. They never did anything like that. But I always knew that they had my back. You know, and, and that there they were right there. They're Right behind I, it me. looked like a head of hair on that picture. Was I? I didn't have the best <laughs> angle, but it looked like you had a head of hair there. Yeah, there is a head of hair. I had an afro back then. Yeah. <laughs> you, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what what high school did you go? Did you go to MacArthur? Where'd you go? MacArthur. Yep. Yeah, Irving MacArthur. Now Billy yep. Breedlove was a really good basketball player. Has he told he you, Billy Breedlove? Oh yeah, I met him once. Has he told you how good a player he was? He's yes, although his sons were much better athletes than him. Yeah. <laughs> well, does Billy have any pictures like you just no, showed us? Because that's anything. that's good form. That's good. I'm assuming you made the basket. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, but I was a six four, the skinniest six four kid out there. And if they had the three point line back when I played, I would have been Bubba Jennings. Oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, that's my, my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Are there any other sports? Uh, you know, I played all of them up until you know, basically had to. I had to make a decision after my freshman year, after getting run over on the football field playing safety, uh, that uh, it's time to pick up sport, and so I picked basketball. But I did play baseball my freshman year, and actually made the JV as a as a freshman third baseman. But I could not hit the ball to save my life, Gary Ashby. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, you know Lance Brown. Oh yeah, I loved Lance. Yeah, Lance at TCU. Lance, yeah, he was at TCU later, but uh, he was a head baseball coach at uh, MacArthur back then. Okay, so, I did and, not know that. I, I ran across him at TCU, and he's a really good, really enjoyable guy. Is he still alive? Yes, he is. Good. In fact, I just saw something a, a few weeks ago on uh, social media where uh, they had a reunion. Uh, some of my old high school friends they get to be, they get together every 
third Thursday of the month. And uh, Coach Brown uh, met up with them over at uh, a restaurant in Bedford over here. Well, if you see him, so tell him Gomer good. says, he's "Hey, something years old now." Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he played uh, ball with J.W. Holt, who who coached with and against us around here. And J.W. passed away recently. I guess uh, I wasn't sure if Lance was still uh, still alive or not. But if yeah, you Lance, happen to run across uh, him, tell him he was that. Like, he was an all Southwest Conference yeah. baseball player at TCU. Yes, he was. Became very good friends with Nolan Ryan. And when Ryan was with the Rangers, Lance used to, even when he uh, the college season was over, he would come out and throw batting practice to the Rangers. Uh, well, a lot of people don't know that Nolan Ryan was the pitching coach at TCU. I think a voluntary a pitching that's coach right. at that's TCU. When Lance was the head coach there. Yeah, exactly right. and he. Yeah. He'd come out and and Nolan would hoot on the other players, and I thought you got to be kidding me! You're Nolan Ryan, just sit over and be cool. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, and of course Nolan's son Reed uh, played for TCU. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Hey, uh, my Augustus texted in. Did you play with Brian Bosworth at MacArthur? No, Brian's younger than me. Oh, he is. Well, you'd have whipped yeah. him, wouldn't you? What's that? You'd have whipped him, wouldn't you? You'd whip him. <laughs> yeah, right. And, yeah, Bosworth played on a two and eight uh, MacArthur team. <laughs> two and eight high school. Yep, they were awful. <laughs> well, do you remember him at all? Was he? Is, did he get it? Was he as bizarre in high school as he got? No, in fact, he was. Uh, he's probably. He's probably. What would he be? He's about six years younger than me. Okay, so, so you probably could have whooped him. Oh, five years younger. I was a 77 grad. He was probably 82. Catch him over at the elementary school and whip oh, him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> What's that? Catch him over at the elementary school and whip him. I said, you probably could have whooped <laughs> Bosworth. <laughs> but I do to... remember working in Lubbock, and um, there was one of those years, and there were many, where OU was on probation. Hey, Bill, save this story till after this break. We're going on a okay, break. And we're right. assuming you were willing to come back for another segment. I'll, I'll be and glad you'll to remember the story. It keeps me from seeing Billy downstairs. <laughs> okay. All right. Try and remember the story. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Sports talk conversations with a good laugh mixed in. This is the Sports Talk with Bedford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. All righty, welcome back. Bill Jones is with us. He is a sports anchor for CBS 11 in Dallas. He lives in South Lake, though, right? Yes. Are you, are yep. you a member at Vaquero? Oh, no. <laughs> Could you I'm join? I kind, I kind of like that place. If, if you'll join, we'll come see you, me and Billy. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've never uh, been invited to set foot on uh, the the grounds at Vaquero for some reason. I'm not sure why. (laughs) Well, they should. You're a big big star. Anyway, so Bill Jones has been following the Mavericks and the Celtics in the NBA Finals, and he reports on them back to his station. And this weekend was kind of an important weekend, and he had to go to a game, and Dallas won. But he's got cousin weekend at your house. Is that where everybody is? Yep, everybody's here, um, and uh, so I've got uh, five grandsons, and uh, then on uh, Billy's side of the family, there's uh, a granddaughter for Billy and a grandson, and uh, they're all here, and uh, fortunately for me, uh, my family, I have three daughters, and they all their families, they all live basically within 10 minutes of the house here. Uh, but, uh, Billy's kids didn't live down in the Austin area down that way. So well, I was trying to do uh, the math. Is that four girls and one boy? Uh, and grandchildren. Yeah. Your grandchildren. I'm five grandsons. So oh, it's wow. six, six boys and one girl as far as the cousins go. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bunch. All right. Say that again. Six, six boys, one girl. It's five, uh, yeah, it's six boys and one girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hope I got that right because they're listening. <laughs> oh, they are? <laughs> well, Do what you know they, their names? Whip out their names if you can remember them all. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's. I know that you love what you do, Bill, and uh, you do a great job of it. And uh, I know Stacy's proud of you. Is she, is she over moving you, her, you moving her out of Lubbock? Stacy finally that. got over it, although <laughs> it took it took about four years uh, for her to get over it because that's when we finally got out of San Antonio and I got a job in Dallas. Well, we we just vacationed down in San Antonio, uh, a little family deal down there, and my gosh, you can sweat in a hurry down there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it is plenty hot. Visit. 
So not that Dallas is a lot better, but it is better. Yeah. You know, from from a sports standpoint, my job, there's and it's still to, today like this. I mean, there's only one team there. There's the Spurs, and yeah. then you got high schools. I mean, they've yeah. got smaller colleges. But Lub- I thought Lubbock was a much better sports market to work in myself when you get Texas Tech and you, you know, you've got every sport that Tech plays and they've been successful in so many of them too. Um, so, you know, we would cover the Cowboys, but you're not really, you're just reporting on them. You're not actually covering them down in San Antonio. But I mean, in Lubbock, we used to, we used to go out to Cowboys training camp and Thousand Oaks and yeah, uh, it was great. Kind of a big deal. Uh, do you right, do anything right, well, with the Olympics? Wait a minute. Before we leave the Cowboys, do you still do the coaches show? Yes, the Mike McCarthy show. And uh, Yeah, that's a good point. And there's much speculation it will be the Bill Belichick show next year, but oh. for now it's the Mike you, McCarthy show. Are you show. kidding me? There's a chance of that? And you heard it here first. Well, I've been spending a lot of time in Boston here lately, and uh, I spent a week there last week, and yeah. um, that's – all anyone would say, oh, is Belichick going to be the coach of the Cowboys next year? So, well, what pressure's did you, on. What did you say? You said, yes, he is. <laughs> Just say yes. Said, we'll see. <laughs> you know, you yeah. talk about how a horrible guy to interview, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Don't make do the worse. Bill Belichick show. Oh, my gosh. You'll have the Bill <laughs> would Belichick show. you rather do the show? Bill Belichick show or the Bill Parcells show? <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd be both of them. Uh, there's an old Red Raider. Uh, how was uh-huh, Parcells? That's right. I think I'd rather do the Parcell show. I think uh, so. I mean, Be- Belichick acts like you're an idiot every question you ask him. Well, Parcells matter. has a personality, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, yeah. Yes, he has Sorry. a personality. He likes to he likes to give it, but he can. I think he can take it too. So with Belichick, you don't know what you're getting. Well, you'd be right. afraid to give it to yeah, Belichick. That's right. <laughs> Not even would you try. rather do the Bobby? <laughs> would you rather do the Bobby Knight show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we love Bobby. We had him on so many times, and we right. we were nervous when we started with him. We really were, but he was great, absolutely yeah. great. That's because he had so much respect for y'all. Oh well, yeah, that's it. He was. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what. There was one day that he didn't, but that's a whole other story. Oh really? That's that's for a cold beer in uh, Dallas one day. I'll <laughs> share that one with you. Well, you can't mess with. We can't mess with him. I'll tell you that. You better yeah. be. You better be the way he thinks it's supposed to be. <laughs> All right. right. Anyway, yeah. how's McCarthy? Do you like do you like McCarthy? Oh, he's a great guy. He I think is he is a great too. guy. And I think he's a really good coach too. And uh, the players love playing for him. And you know, there's so much uh, that goes on that's out of his control uh, as far as the makeup of the team. I, you know, Jerry listens to uh, coaches and but the final say on draft picks and so forth. Jerry's going to make that call, and some of it comes down to to business. A lot of it comes down to business now, yeah. and uh, especially in Jerry's mind, uh, as far as paying how much you pay to players, and they got so much uh, on the table right now with three humongous contracts staring him in the face with Dak and CD and Micah that it's going to be very interesting. But, you know, talking about the Cowboys for this year, you look at the depth on this roster, and there's not a whole, there's not much depth. And so I think that's why. I'd be surprised if they can even duplicate what they've done the last three years, winning 12 games uh, three years in a row, just because you have injuries in this league. And I don't think they're uh, well equipped to offset the injuries that are surely to come. Bill, aren't you a little fascinated? You're on the inside, obviously. You're like way inside. Uh, I'm just fascinated how poor we've been for so long. It's getting close to 30 years now. And you, you and, and Jerry Jones isn't an idiot. You know, I, now he might have made his money pump, punching a hole in the ground over there, and ooh, up to the ground come bubbling tea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's not an idiot. But you'd think he'd say, "All right, I'll do the business side of this, which I'm really good at, and hire Bill Jones or somebody to do the, you know, the the football end of it." You know, he's got a great guy who is his right hand man as far as player personnel goes, Will McClay, uh, who if if Will McClay uh, announced to other teams that he wants to leave the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, he would have multiple offers to be a general manager of other teams. And Jerry listens to what Will has to say. Uh, but I am just uh, as many – I think this is something that is uh, – that, that's 
phenomenal that they are able to do. They have their hands in so many different pots as far as the business side of things and so forth. I just don't know how in the world, and I'm talking Jerry and Steven, how you can make the right decisions in football when you have your hands in so many pots like that. Well, the answer it, is they don't. Full-time deal. And, but, but having said that, I mean – as you know, it's very difficult in this league yeah, to come up with a Patrick Mahomes who can do what the Kansas City Chiefs have done. And a lot of times that's what it comes down to is who's playing quarterback for you. Well, Let you're, you're, you're paying your guy like he's Patrick Mahomes. That's right. That's right. And so that's why I think there's some consternation right now. What uh, Ooh, Word and, of the day. And they're, gonna, <laughs> and they're going to uh, – Try to figure out uh, what happens this season, and uh, it may be after the season before they uh, get a new deal for Dak and get more evidence on the table and see what he can do well, without could, as much talent around him. Well, you look at, at Dak Prescott, and I don't know what it is, but, Bill, if you would be honest, you know he, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have the it factor. I don't know what it is about him. I, don't, I think he's a good quarterback. He's got talent, but he doesn't have it like – Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre. You can go right down the list. Roger Staubach had it. He did. Troy Aikman had it. Troy it. He had it. And, and Dak does not have it. He just doesn't. And I, I hear it all the time. People are just sick of him. And I don't well, – he's staying. He has, a, he has a lot of it, though, uh, from a leadership standpoint yep. and all that stuff. It, and I think what you're getting at is uh, just that – uh, something that others have to get them over the hump. Go when it win comes the to game. Crucial part of the team, uh, crucial part of the season in the playoffs. Go win and, the game at the end. Yeah. When it's all said and done, and he he just can't get it done. And I, you know, I think he's got good receivers. I, you know, I, I, the offensive line. Oh, Terrence Steele. How about Steele, Texas Tech yep. Red Raider, big old contract. Yeah, you know, the offensive line has not been as good as what it was it. here the last uh, couple of years, and they've been able to, to win in spite of it uh, a lot of ways. And they got two major holes they got to fill right now with rookies this year. Uh, but to your point, Terrence Steele, uh, an undrafted guy out of Texas Tech. Yeah. Uh, it's, and then he comes back from his ACL injury last year, and uh, he. Probably it took him probably half a season before he began playing at the same level he was before. But before that injury, the year before in two thousand, what would be twenty twenty two, Zach Martin, who's a future Hall of Famer and plays right alongside him, said the reason that the Cowboys were having success in the run game that year was because of the blocking of Terrence Steele at right tackle. How about that? That's a lot. How about that? We lost one of the Cowboy greats in Larry Allen. A lot of people yeah. consider him the best offensive lineman. In the history of the NFL, uh, he's right up there. You can you can certainly make an argument for him, and a guy who could bench press over seven hundred pounds. And oh my God! There was that Monday night game where he ran down the Saints linebacker from behind. Yeah, uh, early in his career, but yeah. And, All right, let's put this in perspective. Okay, seven hundred pounds. Bill Jones. I'm gonna take me out of the equation. Bill Jones and David Thetford are laying side by side on a on a deal. Could y'all budge seven hundred pounds? The two no. of you together. I couldn't even get it. I couldn't well, not you, you not no just way. you. You got oh, Bill. Together. You got Bill oh, helping Bill, you. He had to be on one handle and I'd be Yeah, we yeah. could we could do that, couldn't we, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say maybe not. <laughs> I would I would be doing mine going, Come on, Bill. Well, that, that what means- do you that means it's 350 pounds each. <laughs> yeah. All right, throw me in there. All three of us are under there. <laughs> Could we even budget? <laughs> and he's lifting 700 pounds. By, that's unbelievable. I think we need to add Billy Breedlove to the equation well, that, there. Yeah. yeah. That, Get Billy in there, too. Yeah. We'll have two of us on one side of the <laughs> yeah. bar. And that's a done deal with, with Billy. We're in there. Yeah. <laughs> that is so phenomenal. You know, how he strong he was. My gosh. Amazing. Maybe he had little bitty short arms. <laughs> yeah, I got tiny arms. I remember that David Grubbs could bench press. Yeah, like, yeah but it's, all he's got to do is move it like two inches, and he's, <laughs> he's, he's so yeah. Anyway. Those guys, guys at the scouting combine who get forty reps of two hundred and twenty-five pounds. Well, they've got like twenty-six inch arms. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> all done. 
<laughs> well, it's uh, I do, the people so badly want the Cowboys to be good. Uh, you know, us old, especially old people like us, because we remember the days, and, and it wasn't that long ago in nineties, mid nineties, when Emmitt Smith was and Jimmy Johnson was the coach, and we just long for those days, Bill. So badly, and we just can't get back. You know, my uh, daughters are all in their 30s now, and they don't have a memory of the Cowboys. (laughs) No, (laughs) No, they sure don't. They think it's your fault. You know, there's one one thing, uh, going back to the Celtics for a second, you know, if when they win this championship, you know how many championships they have won in the last 38 years since 1986? Oh, I'm going to say just three. Yeah, they, this will be their 18th, won't it? I think their 18th it, overall, and this I think is, two. Be, their last one was in 2008. Won, they have won one championship wow. since 1986. Oh my gosh! In 2008, they won it all, but other than that, they have a a drought that is similar to the Cowboys. So I was going to uh, say, so you're saying there's a chance for the Cowboys? <laughs> yeah. So there you go. <laughs> hey, real quickly, <laughs> help me with this because you're in the inside. Uh, one of the reasons I don't, you know, I didn't like the way Jones treated Landry and just the arrogance of him and all that. And all. Is he a likable guy? Should I like him better than I do? He he is a he is a likable guy. In okay. fact, uh, and it doesn't get re- reported. Uh, there are so many employees who have stayed with that organization over the years, and he takes care he takes care of his employees when they have crisis. Uh, you know, if there's a death in the family, he'll send his private jet and take the family uh, across the country, whatever. Uh, he's got a he's got a huge heart. Sometimes that huge heart gets him in trouble as far as falling in love with a player and signing him to a contract that's longer than what and, and paying mm. him more money than what he should be paying that player. And so sometimes it's talking hard about for Dak. him to separate. Yeah, I think he's talking about Dak. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> well, sure I, and I wish Dak like. was a better at fin- you know finishing games and winning, but you know there was just those quarterbacks like Rodgers and Favre and certainly Patrick Mahomes. You know there'll be thirty something seconds left in the game and they're down two or if, even they're down four. You think in t- Kansas City can still win? They still got a chance to win, and they do. Yep. You know. And this is a difference between Favre and uh, Mahomes because Mahomes did it, you know, from the first time he got an opportunity to play basically in the league. Yeah. You know, but remember back with Favre and with Peyton Manning and with John Elway, it, for them, it took a long time for before they finally got over that yeah. playoff hump. You know, Favre was going up against the Cowboys teams of the 90s and was losing in the playoffs. Uh, and so there was probably the same sort of – talk about Favre at that point, and then he finally got over the hump. And Elway, it was basically a decade before exactly. he finally won it all. And so I guess that's what Jerry's banking on. I don't know. <laughs> Someday. Well, one of these days. It's, you're right, though. And I wasn't aware, Bill, that we got another minute here, but I wasn't aware that we'd won 12 games. How many years in a row? Three years in a row. Twelve. It used to be eight. Wins. Eight and eight. You yeah, just count eight. on it. We were eight and eight. Book it. Yeah. <laughs> sports talk conversations with a good laugh mixed in. This is the Sports Talk with Bedford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Hey, Lubbock Truck Sales, you talk about first class operation, and right here in Lubbock, Texas, this is a first class operation. Go to Kenzie, James Kenzie, the whole team out there at Lubbock Truck Sales. They're big time, y'all, and they supply trucks and parts and uh, trailers and the whole thing that you're looking for, the big names you're looking for, for this whole part of the country, I think. there People just know about them and want to be do business with Lubbock Truck Sales. Just outside the loop on the Slayton Highway. And, of course, they take care of Texas Tech with the, and the going band from Raiderland and football. They provide those trucks and have been doing it for years. That shows you their commitment to Texas Tech. And also, Fuddruckers, new location, same great food, 66th in Milwaukee. And uh, Cafe Ventures is their, is their catering arm of that. But Fuddruckers is just delicious. And it's a bright, open place. Yeah. And the other one was sort of dark. Yeah. You know, this one's not. Just the opposite. So. And they have great food. I, the salads are uh, the whole deal. I, you know, the, the hamburgers for sure you know about. 
But everything else on the menu is really good. Fud Ruckers. All righty, we got Gus on the phone with us. Oh. He's been at the he's been at the state tournament, and I wonder how many of you guys were down there, Gus. And that's cool that some of y'all went back. Some of his old classmates and and uh, teammates went back to see Jimmy. We still got him. We can't. He might be away from his phone at the time being. Oh. He, he's eating. Hang on, hang on. It's a whole lot better when I unmute my microphone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, go ahead. I just and thought it. your mouth was full. <laughs> yeah. Did you the, hear uh, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Hey, it, it was cool about, you know, him having a bunch of friends and all that there. And I had different guys, you know, because I coached the summer ball stuff for all those years. And a bunch of those guys would see me just up in the stand and say hi. And there were Lubbock High players of his and Coronado players, you know, and how to, I even had a dozen or so texts from people going, hey, what's Coach Webster's phone number? You know, wanting, wanting to shoot him a note of congratulations. <laughs> and it was That's just cool. neat. And I, I'll tell you, all of that stuff is neat. The neatest part of that whole deal, for I me, mean, if you had to just pick the one coolest thing about it, is that his 90-year-old mother was there. Oh, that is awesome. Yep. And she's in good health, and she got to see it. In fact, she's kind of a – She's, she's a lot like Coach Magel. You know how he's doing good at 90. She's doing good at 90. And uh, and she got to be there. And, of course, Jimmy's dad, and you all may remember this, it may have been kind of in between and in around your time, but Jimmy's dad was, you know, one of those guys over at Dixie Little League that coached the team every year. And then when his kids left, he was still coaching teams and out there raking it. Just whatever Little League has to have is those kind of dads that just show up every day and do all that stuff. And, and uh and he loved all that stuff, but he passed away 20 years ago, 22 years ago. And everybody that knew that family and knew that going way back, we were all like, man, James Webster was looking down, smiling. Ooh. Is this first time Jimmy's taking a team to Austin? Yes, it is. He oh. got close a couple times with some region finals and then, then to win it with two walk-off crazy wins like he did, man. He, it, It's funny. I talked to Coach Mago. I called him on Monday or Tuesday about – couple things but he and, he and i had been texting with carol and saying hey jimmy want it and you know coach was full of questions and all that stuff but he he said to me something like you know sometimes it's just your turn you know and you know yeah. about that coach ash you know oh. how you go down there and get beat on one little thing one little thing one little thing and then that next time it comes around it's all of a sudden you go wait that other team over there just got beat on that little thing that beat us last year well it's you know, it, and, it's a fine line just no. to get there and then when you get there the lines can be even finer just ask frank did you hear frank uh, yeah, just had frank just on say, you, you just you just you just had that conversation 10 minutes ago with the guy that walked the fine you talk about a fine line it. that's like one inch oh you know, if he swings one more inch or if that third base umpire has to pee yeah, you know, you know, there's lots of things that go into them continuing that inning and then winning. I mean, most of the time, they ring them up. If yeah, you know, most yeah. of the time. And, and and I don't think any of us are going. Oh, that's a terrible call. He rung him up right there. I don't. I, I mean, that was such a fifty-fifty call. But <laughs> it was. You know. Anyway, hey, Gus, I'm watching it. Night. I'm watching it on replay, and I'm thinking that Tennessee's going to win. Because of these dings I got on my phone, I didn't read them, but I just sort of deduced that I think Tennessee might win this. And that guy does that. And I go, well, crap, they lost. Yeah. And and then, the, then they didn't. So, what a, anyway, it's we a were, fine line. So, kudos yeah, to Jimmy. We were, oh, yeah. No, that's exactly right. It, it, went his, it went his way this time. to, And they had the best team in the region. You know, that, of course, two, what, three weeks ago they – didn't allow a run to love at Cooper and we'd all seen how good those guys were, you know, shut them out two days in a row. And then the region finals for them was, was, uh, Argyle. Well, that's a district opponent. You know, that's kind of a, for, to put that in local terms, that's like when Monterey and Coronado met, you know, to go to Austin. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a ton of emotion on that. And Jimmy and them get beat one to nothing in the first game. And then because it's local, they got to do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, instead of, double header and all that but then they come back and beat him pretty good on game two and you know jimmy's team had a sacri- a suicide squeeze in that game and two safeties and ended up winning it like eight to two or something you know and then they came back and run ruled them in game three our guy was kind of out of bullets mm-hmm. and, you know but you're just you just go back and say you know how close they were in a couple of those deals and then you you know and then they get down there and scoreless game in the top of the seventh and jimmy's got a guy that'll be a second or third round pick big left-hander and 
and he's getting matched. He's matching that kid from Leander Rouse, and it's 0-0 in the top of the seventh. All the drama you could want. Two out, nobody on. They hit a ground ball to third, and Jimmy's, first, Jimmy's third baseman throws high to first. It gets behind the first base. You're going to, hey, this guy's going to get the second base. You know, they're going to get a runner in scoring position here with two outs in the seventh. First baseman fires it over the short stop head. Well, Jimmy's got two guys there backing up. The outfielders get into position and back up. And then the thing kind of kicks off the shortstop glove and short hops the other deal. Now it's rolling out to the wall in left field. And so it's a little league home run with two <laughs> out. Home run. Oh, with two out in the top of the seventh and nobody on in a game that was just oh. stellar. Oh, that's... If he's, he's getting beat on that crap, you know, and then they come back and lead off, you know, bottom of the seventh, they're batting first out. Kid walks the next one, and he might have been up against. You know, you get 110 pitches in the tournament these days. Oh, and, yeah, that's a max. And so he goes 2-0 on the next hitter, and I think he, you know, kid get tired, so they make the pitch and change, and then he ends up walking that guy. So now you got first and second one out on two wild walks. Pitch. Yeah, wild pitch. Oh yeah, wild pitch and all that. And so they're either anyway, their bases loaded, one out, and, and he hits a ground ball short. Jimmy's guy does. And he's probably going to beat it over there at first. But you got the force out in second, so now there's two outs. It's like he's either safe, and we're going to keep playing, or he's out, and yeah, or then this thing's over. And they get the throw gets away at first, and so the kid from second comes around and scores. And so you're thinking one minute you're thinking double play game over, and the next minute Jimmy's guys are dogpiling. No, not minute. even the next minute. The next five no. seconds. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Well, they deserve so it. They, yeah, yeah, they really yeah. did. Yeah. Well, you don't deserve to get beat on a little league home uh, run. Yeah, well, well, you don't deserve to lose if you're the other team on a walk, walk, wild Ooh. pitch. Yeah, error. Right. Oh, well, that's right. You know exactly right. So anyway, it's a fine. Yeah, but, back to it's a fine line. Well, and so they go through all of that delirium just to go. Okay, now we got to play a state championship game, and <laughs> so wow. they come back on Saturday at noon and. They're winning five to three in the seventh and give up single double double right off the bat, and so now it's five to five runner on second or whatever, and they end up pitching out of that deal. Uh, that Lucas Lovejoy is yeah. the team, oh, and name. man, they're big old kids. Yeah, it sounds like a kid's name, but it's the school Lucas Lovejoy. Yeah, it sounds or like a porn star. Get, it's not like a bar get, or somewhere. Yeah, right? <laughs> they get something first. else. <laughs> they get the runner on third and one out, and infield's in, outfield's in, all that, and. Jimmy's got those little first pitch breaking ball, and the hitter checks wings a little one hopper back to the mound, look the guy back, throw the guy out, and they end up getting out of the inning, and then they won it and with the walk off in the seventh. Wow! It's just you know, it's just one of those deals, just exactly what you're talking about with Frank's thing. Like this thing could have gone sideways at you know at about six different points, it could have gone sideways. But and and I think the cool thing about it from Jimmy's side is he had the one big star pitcher, but he he had five kids on that team that were JV kids last year as juniors. Oh, wow. And so Yeah, so it's really neat. So you he's know, got like them stacked up pretty good. Yeah, and just, yeah, absolutely. And some player development stuff that's good, you know, because that's hard now, man. Around Lubbock, Texas, somebody be drifting off to the private school and doing all that, <laughs> not sitting on the, sitting on the, you know, whatever. Yeah, so not that, sitting on the bench, not sitting no, on the JV as a junior. No. Well, Mike right. Mangle wouldn't even have juniors on the JV. Matt Miller's no. the only junior I can remember being on the JV, and that's because he's left-handed. You're, and, you're right. And, and yeah, and then Matt took that big jump. Hey, the, the other one who was a junior on the JV was Jimmy Webster, and that was only because the catcher in our class had kind of not worked out, and Jimmy was – and, and uh, Coach Mangle went and got him. Like, he cut him our sophomore year, and then his hey, junior year, he's like, hey, you need to come back and – be my JV catcher. Well, then David Coleman tears up his knee. He's catching for catching for us on a state tournament team, and then gets to go to play at Love of Christian for Larry Hayes and Jimmy wow. Staple, and and now he's a coach for his whole life. And also, I mean, yeah, it's a uh, wow. It's, it's yeah. a testament. Yeah, it's, his, his story's a testament. In fact, when I talked to Coach Mabel, he goes, he goes, you know, Jimmy's got such a great story. He goes, you, you should write a book on him. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm writing any more books, but I, maybe a paragraph or a chapter. Yeah, I mean, well, you're, the beauty of it is, is Coach Magel at 90 years old still very much remembers the Jimmy Webster story. And of course, he's super proud of him. And I think I told y'all that we, as best we can tell, that's him and Bart, uh, 
Bill Bratcher are the two yeah. that have, of his players that have won a state championship. I think that's the only two. Yeah, that's, yeah and that's, that's, that's what probably right. I, asked, I asked Jeff Hart because Jeff's been in the game for a long time. He would know. And, you know, Jeff, Jeff, when I sent him that, he said, that's what I think is true, too, because Dickie Jones is good. And yeah. Bart Bratcher was good. And a bunch of those guys have good teams, but none of them won it. Okay. I think you might Coach be Dudley. right. Coach Dudley's the other one. Coach Dudley got that close. He got close. Yeah. Then, yeah. A bunch of them got close. With without Ooh. a doubt. Uh let's see. College World Series, Gus. Yeah. Uh there couldn't possibly have been a better opening day than what we had no. yesterday. Oh my gosh. So one great. one three to two walk off and one twelve to eleven walk off. <laughs> so what was great. the early game walk off? I didn't see any of it. Was it a really a blooper? Really or well, a, yeah, really well pitched, you know, just really tight kind of game and no, they the the, the the controversy, I guess, if you want to sit around and have fun second guessing that thing, North Carolina, um, I guess they had tied it up at that point. So it's two to two in the bottom of the ninth. And they, North Carolina's got a guy that'll be kind of a late first round draft pick, like a center fielder. His last name's Honeycutt, you know, and he hit 60 home runs and stole 70 home bases in his career and all that stuff. Really good athlete. But there is some swing and miss in there. And uh, North Carolina State. No, Virginia. Sorry, Virginia was pitched, went ahead and pitched to him with the runner on third in the bottom of the seven. You know, they could have put him on and, you know, pitched to the next guy, but they chose to pitch to Vance Honeycutt, and he drilled a base hit through the left side for the walk-off hit, and everybody was like, why did you pitch to that guy? And the only thing I could think of is that North Carolina had a side armor pitching, and they must have had a good left-handed hitter on deck that made him say, hey, State, mm-hmm. let's get this guy. But I – I, I don't know that for a fact, but yeah, it was a two zero breaking ball, and, you know, probably trying to throw a little get over curveball for a strike and get back in that count. Well, Honeycutt ripped it for a base hit. And you know, maybe, maybe they weren't intentionally walking him. Maybe they were pitching around him a little, and maybe the guy was wasn't supposed to throw it in the middle right. of the plate. Maybe he's supposed to bounce the curveball up there or something. Yep. You know, just because something doesn't work, it doesn't mean that that's what the coach had in mind. When it just means sure. that's what the players, you know did so oh, yeah that's one of my that's one of my drops that i got in there fired up a couple of years ago on the show and now you of course the way the the way the afternoon tech talk video goes if you say something stupid they're going to record it and use it the rest of your life <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see you have nice producers brendan would never do that to you but uh that's kind of part of the stick but somewhere in there i'm talking about hey i don't care about the play call tell me about the execution and so you know, on one hand, you can be critical of that and go, why did they pitch? Why did they throw the curveball, blah, blah, blah. On the other hand, it's like, hey, I guarantee you they didn't, didn't signal in hanging curveball. Yeah, hang that one wasn't, on. yeah. yeah. It, they were trying to – he was trying to nibble, and he got a big old fat chunk of the strike yeah, zone, yeah. and it got ripped, and that's that. So Yeah, especially with an open base, you'd sure think they yeah, might have been trying to nibble around, and he didn't nibble. Not a good yeah, nibbler. Two, All right, no, who we got today? Right, and the run didn't mean anything either. Yeah, the, the, the back set, they put him on first, his run doesn't mean anything no, anyway. No, that's, what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Today, who do we have? Well, somebody asked me that the other day, and I was, or, just, or a couple hours ago, and I was standing there trying to piece together the rest of the bracket. I could probably go answer my phone and see it. But uh, cause here, here's the beauty of the thing. There's some symmetry there. It's not the kind of symmetry we like because we'd rather have the Big 12 teams and we'd rather have Texas Tech teams there. But it's four ACC teams and four SEC teams. I know it. I hate that. I know. And so we've got North Carolina State as one of them and Florida as one of them. Um, and I'll think of it. I'll think of the others here in a minute. I knew three about an hour ago, and I can only remember two. Here's here's what I'll tell you about this, and you guys can appreciate this. the The head coach at North Carolina State is late sixties, late sixties, about about your age, Coach Ash, and he is the last coach left that coached against Mike Gustafson, the player. Oh wow! So I'm I got a little sweet spot for him, but he was. He was like from 80, I don't know, 1988 to 95 or whatever. He was at North New Mexico State. Now, hold it. Tell this again. Did you say Blake Christie? No, no, no. No, no, no. NC State. Yeah. They're a good coach. Coach at New Mexico State. Okay. 
Yeah, he's 68 years old. His name is Elliot Avent, and he coached at New Mexico State in the late 80s and early 90s, and he coached against me when I played at that. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I got a soft spot for him. Like, that's my last link to any relevance right there. (laughs) Well, I'll I'll pull for him until they play Tennessee because I got to stick with my buddy Frank. Hey. Yeah, no, I hear you, and they're on opposite sides of the bracket, so you're Not- safe there. Wouldn't, wouldn't happen until next week. You've been listening to the Sports Talk with Thetford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live Saturday mornings from 9 to noon on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app.